Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you Baby B's birth story. Baby B was born a week and a half ago? Two and a half weeks ago? When were you born? It's been one long day since Baby B was born. But that's all the introduction that this video needs. Let's learn how Baby B entered this world. Oh, and one more thing. We're talking about birth, so there's gonna be some TMI. It was a great birth, a beautiful birth, but there's gonna be some TMI. Just be prepared for that. I can't focus. She's so cute. I'm gonna put some links to some other related videos below. Whoa, big burps, nice one. The story of the baby that we lost to miscarriage. You should definitely watch. Bless you, baby. Baby A's birth story, because that played a lot into this birth story. Um, last week, two weeks ago, recently, I also did a video about how I was feeling going into this birth and what I was doing to prepare for this birth. So that's another great video for you to watch. I'll link all those below. And I think that's it, but if I think of more, I'll stick them in that list. So let's get into the birth timeline. I'm not gonna start at the day that she was born. I'm gonna start almost a week ahead of time, six days before she was born. I sent a text to my midwife. I told her that I didn't think that I was in early labor. I didn't think anything was happening, but that I wanted to let her know that a couple of big things changed at the same time and that I thought that they should be aware of it just in case. I had a couple of really big mucus plug losses that day. The baby noticeably dropped a bit more, so I was able to breathe better and eat more. The Braxton Hicks that I had been having before used to be just tightening in the abdomen, but they kind of changed more into pelvic pressure and some back pain. And in addition, the contractions started to be more related to my movement and less just kind of like random. I also really needed to breathe through these contractions. They were really painful. They weren't contractions that I could just ignore anymore. So at that point, I put myself on a little bit of a partial rest to try to make it so that the contractions would slow the heck down because I didn't want her to come so early. At that point, we were only at 37 and a half weeks. She was fully baked, she was welcome to come anytime, but I was like, I've got work to do before you come, girl. Let's not do this now. That was the point at which I was like, oh my gosh, she really could come like any time now. And that was when I decided on my always be ready rule that I talked about in this video here. She's being really wiggly right now. The next day, or maybe even two days later, Buddy did the same thing as he did when I was in early labor with baby A, and he got super duper licky. I actually caught it on camera with baby A. I don't remember what the heck video that was in, but I think I'd be able to find it. I'll pin a comment if I'm able to find that video of Buddy alerting. But I was in early labor when Buddy did that last time, and this time he did it again like four days before I ended up having the baby. But this time, I actually didn't believe him because right after he did that, all my contractions stopped. Everything stopped being warning signs, it just all went away. So I was like, huh, Buddy's a little bit off. And I was wrong, Buddy was right, Buddy's always right. She ended up making it to 38 and a half weeks. <coughs> oh honey. During those few days, I did notice that I had a couple of mood swings. I'm so sorry to my husband. And I also had a few really big nesting spurts. Baby B was born at 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. So I'm gonna start this timeline 12 hours earlier at 4 p.m. Saturday afternoon. We were at Chili's and my husband and I both just completely overate. I spent the afternoon flushing my body with water because the meal was so salty and I didn't want to be dehydrated if I ended up going into labor that night. Thank God I did. And remember, I was literally doing this every night, all the time. I was always ready for labor. I had no contractions at Chili's, but when we got home, I noticed them starting to pick up. And you know, Braxton Hicks happen, it's fine, I didn't think anything of it. But 8 p.m. rolled around and, you know, always be ready. We were getting ready for some TV and relaxing time before bed, and I figured I should try to shove one more meal in before we go to bed for the night. So I ate some yogurt with granola, even though I wasn't hungry, and I'm so glad that I did because I ended up laboring all night. Oh, good burps, baby. By 9 p.m. I was having pretty strong contractions. 
by 10 p.m. I was timing them. But by the time I even started timing them, they were already lasting for 50 to 90 seconds and they were two to five minutes apart, meaning I was already in active labor. Holy crap, zero to 100, like suddenly it was baby time. At 10.30 p.m., I called the midwife, I called the doula, and then we also got a hold of our neighbor to come over to watch baby A. Baby A was already asleep because it was 10.30 p.m., but we had our whole guest room set up for her so that she could come over and sleep at our house. It was just about 11.11 11 p.m. when we arrived at the birth center. The way the birth center is set up is basically a hotel room. You can just imagine it being a hotel room. There was a full-size bed. The bed was a reclining bed that had the head thing that came up, which is so awesome. And then there was also an oversized tub in the bathroom for having a nicer, easier, more comfortable labor. And delivery, if you decide to deliver in the bathtub. Now remember, when I got there, I was already in active labor. Like, I was already going. So I tried laying in the bed for a little while, and I was like, nope, I need the tub. By 11.45 p.m., I was in that tub. From the pictures that were being taken, it was clear that I very quickly got into the zone, very quickly got into the swing of things because, guys, I looked so high off my butt on these hormones. I'm telling you, 10, 15 minutes in that tub and I was in this weird trance of just flowing and flowing and just, I don't know how to describe it. I was on another freaking planet on these hormones. That's one thing that was very different with this birth over baby A's birth. So I really feel like I surrendered. I surrendered to the sensations in my body. I did a really good job relaxing. I was calm in my head. I was doing my mantras. Everything was great. And it became really euphoric, even though it was really painful. And looking back at the photos, it's just, it's weird to see myself in that kind of a strange daze, in that like weird state. You hungry or hungry baby? Hold on, we gotta film, and then I'll feed you hungry baby. I'm gonna throw in a random detail here. At 12.30 p.m. a.m., wow, it's 12.30 in the morning, I started instinctually doing this side stretch while I was in the tub. It's irrelevant now, but it's gonna come up later. I was doing this thing where I was twisting my body during contractions, even though it was really painful, and I'll explain later. But it's a really amazing example of how your instincts can really guide you during birth. What I wanted for my pregnancy, labor, birth, postpartum, was very hands-off, very natural, trust my body, we don't need all of these interventions. That's my personal philosophy. So I didn't have any cervical checks for my entire pregnancy, for my entire labor and delivery. I had no idea where my cervix was in terms of how many centimeters dilated I was. But at 1 a.m. I started to show signs of transition, which means that you're going from 8 to 10 centimeters and it's going to be time for pushing soon. First, I was having trouble with my temperature regulation, so I decided that I wanted to get out of the tub and go over to the bed again. I was uncontrollably shaking in my entire body and I also threw up. This is all between like 1 and 2 a.m., so we know that I was becoming fully dilated somewhere in that 2-ish, 3-ish in the morning time. Transition is the hardest part of labor, but it's also the shortest part of labor. It's the time when your brain is telling you that you just can't do it anymore, and that means that the baby is going to be born soon, and if you hold out just a tiny bit longer, you're going to be there. You're going to have your baby in your arms. At this point, contractions are usually like 60 to 90 seconds long, but they're only two minutes apart, so you're barely getting any breaks anymore. It's exhausting. Now, unfortunately, it was around that time that we learned that baby B had flipped to be sunny side up, just like baby A was. I get it, when you gotta eat, you gotta eat. I learned in birth class that sometimes the shape of the mom, prior injuries, especially low back injuries, which I have had, can change the way that the baby navigates through the birth canal, or more specifically through the pelvis, through that pelvic bone. And my two girls did take the same path. They both started out anterior, the way that they're supposed to be. They both dropped, and then during labor, they both made that decision to flip over. With baby A, she was born sunny side up. She came right out that way. But with baby B, we decided that we could intervene. 
At 3 a.m., we did the side-lying release from spinning babies. That was one of the stretches that I had been doing to keep her flipped during the end of our pregnancy together. And it was also what I happened to be doing in the bathtub like two and a half hours earlier on my own. There's something about that side-lying twisting motion that just gets the baby to flip into a better position. It releases something and it really helps with the position. So for about three to five contractions on each side, we had one of my legs completely off the side of the bed, and it was one of the most excruciatingly painful things I've ever been through in my life. And after that, I felt like I had no pain tolerance left. It was almost unbearable. That was so much pain. But I could feel her head turn and grind within my pelvis, and I could tell that she had rotated to a different position. We were able to verify with the Doppler that her body had in fact moved right back to where it was supposed to be and that would mean that my pushing phase would be easier. Hey sweetie pie, we were just eating and then you didn't want to eat and now you want to eat again. What's going on? It's okay. To me, it just, it was just proof that this is something that's so innate and instinctual and primal within the birthing woman. Like, for me to be doing a movement and not know why I'm doing it but I'm just doing it, and then it turns out it was the right thing to do, it just still blows my mind. Because in that moment, like I said, I was high off my butt. I was like, gone. Like, the hormones that get released during childbirth are crazy. You're not there. You're, you're very foggy. And so I just can't believe how well I was doing, even though I couldn't think straight. too hot for lights and cuddling and all this movement. Baby was now really, really low and I had some urges to use the restroom. Um, everyone knows that it's a very normal thing to poop on the bed while you're having a baby and I'm sure I did some of that, but I also just kind of had the urge to pee. I wanted to get some of this pressure out. So I went to the toilet and I straddled facing the toilet and pretty much immediately I had these crazy urges to push. It was baby time. So I peed real fast, but then I stayed there for a few contractions because I kind of liked it there. It felt really productive to be there on the toilet, but the pressure was super intense, like pressure like I have never felt before. And at that point, I completely lost control of my breath. I could not be mellow anymore. I started letting out these crazy warrior woman moans and grunting and just generally turned into the badassery, powerful side of childbirth rather than the serene, tranquil, drugged up side of childbirth. Natural drugged up. I didn't actually have any pain relief or anything like that during my birth. My water broke, the baby dropped even more, things sped up even more, and I was like, oh crap, baby's coming. I can feel her coming, she's coming right now. So I stood up, my doula waddled me to the bed, and I plopped down just barely in time for baby to stop crowning. It was like that. It was like, once the water broke, she was very engaged. We were ready to go. Probably like within a few contractions of my water breaking. And that makes sense. That's expected. Anytime your membranes rupture, you're getting more direct contact from the head on your cervix. And that speeds things along because it's stimulating your cervix more. Pushing baby B out, I can honestly say, was one of the most transformative experiences of my entire life, hands down. It was of course painful, but it was also a euphoria. I used my hands to feel her head and assist the birth, so I felt very connected to myself and to her and to my body. I could feel her head coming, I could assist my own body in allowing that to happen. And the second her head popped out, I could feel that she was facing the back, which means that our flipping efforts worked. And that was probably why she was born so much easier and so much quicker than baby A was. Plus because she was my second. In the same contraction, she rotated and I pushed her shoulder out. And then the midwife gently tipped her up so that I could catch her myself. And we stuck her right on my tummy. We were surprised to learn that she actually had a pretty short cord. It was only about 14 inches. So until the placenta was born, I actually couldn't get her all the way up to my chest. This is probably the first time that I've ever talked about it without it bringing tears to my eyes. It was one of the most glorious, powerful, and in control moments that I have ever had with myself. Thankfully after that, nothing weird happened. We were there for monitoring for a few hours, and then we got home at 7 a.m., which was right when baby A was waking up. 
We literally just left for the night, came home with a newborn. Now I birthed through a birth center and midwives, so instead of being kept for a long time at the birth center, they send you home and instead they do visits to your home. So we got discharged very quickly, but then the midwives were coming over to my house to check on my and baby's vitals. In addition to that change, I also enjoyed being able to move freely throughout my entire labor and delivery, partially because I was not hooked up to an epidural or IVs. I was not impaired in any way. I didn't have any happy gas. My husband got to come up onto the full-size bed to cuddle me during labor, which was fantastic. I got to eat and drink freely as I wanted to. So I think I drank 64 ounces of water throughout my labor. I was drinking liquid IV packets to keep my energy up. I didn't have any swelling. I didn't feel dehydrated. And within an hour or two after birth, I was chipper, I was chatty, I was up and walking around, well, to get to the toilet and back, but, you know, I was, I was doing really well. So I feel like I recovered quickly because I was able to keep replenishing throughout my birth. I do want to talk more about my decision to go through a birth center, and last time with baby A, I decided to do a home birth, but also ended up transitioning to a hospital, or transferring to a hospital. So I have a little bit of experience with home birth center, and hospital birth, and I think that that would be a really interesting video to do for you guys sometime in the future. But for now, Baby A's babysitter is leaving in T minus three minutes, so I need to get running. I need to fan myself off first, then I need to get running. Are you done? Of course, I have to thank you guys again for being here for me, for your support, your love, your kind messages, your prayers. I really feel like you guys sending the positive vibes our way helped so much with just, you know, going into this feeling supported and feeling confident. So thank you so much for sharing your birth stories and, you know, just for interacting in the comments and letting me know that you're thinking about me. I do think it helped a lot and it means so much to have this community on here to, you know, not feel so alone, to feel included and loved and you guys just know that on my end it's reciprocated. I'm so glad that she's here. I'm so glad it went well. I'm so glad I didn't get preeclampsia. What more could we have asked for? Thank you guys. I'll see you next week. Use the remote this time.